Hey everybody, it's the Trout and welcome to another episode of the Trout Show. Thank you so much for stopping by. That handful of photographs you saw at the beginning of this video were taken by a wonderful photographer. Her name is Jacqueline with Sky Media. Now, you may not realize this, but as performers and musicians, they got to have to be able to promote themselves with some great marketing tools. One of the great marketing tools is a photograph or photographs, whether you're performing or in the studio, you're talking to fans, whatever they are, and they have to have some life to them. And that's what Jacqueline does. She travels all through Texas and through other states, traveling with bands, taking wonderful photographs of where they are performing and what they're doing. And I just love her work a lot because it has a lot of life to it. And if I go back several decades and look at some of the most famous photographers that existed, one of them was Paul McCartney's wife, who passed away several years ago. And her name was Linda Eastman. Now, here's a picture of Linda that Linda took of the Beatles. It has a lot of life in it. And I mean, she took a lot of famous photographs. She was at that time, her name was Linda Eastman before she married Paul McCartney. And then, of course, it became McCartney. And she took pictures of a lot of famous musicians. And they're all well known and people know about them because how great the images are that they took, that she took. In addition to that is another photographer that is still around. Her name is Annie Leibowitz. And Annie's been taking photographs, very famous photographs for years of not just movie stars and musicians, but a lot of different things, but she's got a wonderful style. And here's a photograph of the Rolling Stones when they're performing that she took several years ago. Both of these photographs convey a message. And the message is you wanna listen or you wanna see more about this band or the people that you take a photograph of. And that's what Jacqueline does with Sky Media. So today we're gonna to take a diversion from talking to musician and we're gonna to talk to Jacqueline with Sky Media about what she does, how she does it, and how she makes live come to photographs of people that perform all the time on the stage. So sit back and enjoy it and watch this episode with Jacqueline Sky Media that's next on The Trout Show. When did you get involved in wanting to do what you do and take pictures of bands? So at the Larry Joe Taylor songwriting competition two years ago, I went, I was invited to go by some friends of mine and uh, I had never even been to LJT in my entire life. I had never gone as a teenager or anything. And they invited me to go out and they were like, just come see what it's about. It's just like a songwriter thing. And I didn't really know much about that at all. Um, but I was like, okay, hey, like, let's go. And so I went and I sat in the front row and I listened to Carrie Lick, Presley Lynn Hale, um, Race Ricketts, and a handful of other really amazing, talented people. And I now, knew tell, in that be, moment, tell people what, what genre they people play. What do they play? What kind of music they play? Oh, uh, this is country roots. Uh, right. Yeah. I just want to make sure people, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sure some people stuff, go, oh, yeah, you know? I know who they are. And then other people go, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Um, but listening to these voices, uh, it really resonated with me that I was exactly where I was supposed to be. And I felt like I belonged. Uh, for the first time in my life and that was a really cool feeling and I never wanted to let go of it so I didn't um after the show or after they got done uh, performing I went and introduced myself to all three of them and those people have been some of my best friends in the whole wide world ever since mm -hmm. that night um their investment and belief in me is what drove me to where I am today and I give them all the credit in the world for that I love them dearly um observing live music and the feeling that it gave me made me feel the same way that creating art in any capacity does oh knocked out my airpod <laughs> um and i i just fell in love with it right in that moment and that week race ricketts asked me to shoot his set he won the contest and he asked okay. me to shoot his set at the okay. all stage at Larry Joe Taylor. And I was, you know, blown away. Obviously I never photographed a musician in my life. And he was like, well, I think you can wing it. <laughs> now, like, did you use okay. your phone? Did you have your phone or did you buy another one? No. Did you buy so it? I was, 
prior to entering the music industry, I was already an, a photographer. I okay. had established a clientele uh, through portrait photography. I was doing grad photography, couples, families, weddings, um, stuff of that nature. So you had and all the stuff. You already yeah, had I the had camera all and all the lenses yeah. and the umbrellas and all that stuff. You kind of had all that stuff that you needed. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So I showed up and I took some pictures during his set and, you know, I got to experience LJT and meet other photographers in the scene. And I ended up getting the opportunity to shoot main stage um, that the last uh, Friday night. It was the night that Parker McCullum played and I got to shoot from Cat Hasty until Parker McCullum. And those photos being in my initial portfolio, I feel like were really helpful in aiding me getting, you know, other clients in that same network of people and artists. Right. And um, I was working as a barista just a couple of weeks prior to this. And I quit my job and didn't really know what I was gonna do. Uh, I quit my job for various personal reasons. Uh, but I, I had to, you know, for what was best for me. I didn't know what was going to do, what I was going to do. I was just kind of trusting God and the universe and seeing what happened. And sure enough, a couple, you know, short bit later, I walked into the music industry and I've never had another job since that day, since that night that I met those three folks at the songwriting competition finals at Larry Joe Taylor. I have been a full-time photographer and videographer since then. I actually didn't start doing videography until about six, six to, to eight months later after that. Mm-hmm. Um, but now it's a big part of what I do as well. And just getting to tell stories has always been something that I love. And getting to document history and people and emotions has always been something that I love. I've been a writer since I was a little girl. And getting to basically take all of the stuff that's in my head and just put it out has been such an amazing journey. So you understand, because you're creative, the creative process of music. I love you, music. You know, and, yeah. and, and so the other thing about it is, too, you had the ability to shoot because you already had experience with it. And... And, and what if a tiger course is pretty boring to a certain extent, but you've got to make it look good, you know? Mm-hmm. So you got, you got to make people look good, even though they're, they're having their wedding is still. So some of you just have to, it's like going on, going on vacation to a very famous place and you still have to go see it. So if you're in London and you want to go see certain things that everybody else sees, but it's like, okay, wedding photography is the same way. You got to have this picture with that picture. So mm-hmm. when you do just a, a logistics thing for me, so when you shoot video, do they, do they peel off, the sound for you to add it to it off the board or how are you just mic it and go wing it? Um, so it just really depends. If it's a band that I work with long term or I work with a handful of times, we will we'll work on board audio and getting mm-hmm. that kind of uh, yeah. that grade of audio incorporated in the video work that we do. Um, if it's like my first time with a band or it's just like a lower grade production or whatever, I'll just do some raw audio. Um, for example, I recently had the opportunity to shoot Zach Bryan at the, at the station fest while I was with my band, Jacob Stelly band that I work for. And, um, I didn't have any access to board audio, obviously from that right. large of a production. So sure. I just used a shotgun mic and used the raw audio. Yeah. I just feel like it, it depends on the situation, you know, uh, if it's an intimate moment, like you know, artists singing together backstage or anything Mm. like that. I'll use a shotgun mic because I want to hear all of the sounds in the room. I want to hear them all bouncing off of each other. And I feel like the equipment I use does a pretty decent job. You know, I think out of the years that I've seen uh, rock photographers or country, whatever they are in the music business, it's the photos that are taken behind the scenes that are more intriguing to me than the ones. I mean, obviously, there's nothing better if you're standing in front of a, you know, taking a picture behind you of the crowd and there's 5,000 people and they're all going, hi, you know, there's, that's a great photo if you're in a band like that. But it's the intimate more in the, like you mentioned a while ago, that you're in the back and seeing things that happen before they go. And everybody has their own little re- regimen. I, and I know that because all the bands, we always had, you had your own thing. Uh, I'm sure. more of a guy, give me my guitar, let's go. 
you know, <laughs> slow something back and then we can hit. That's nice right. and easy. So, yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time doing it because uh, I just want to get there. But I, I think the other thing is that people don't understand is what you do is very vital to the business because it's, it's, it's really needed as a, as a band or an individual artist. You know, the other side of it is the social media side of, of course, it's changed so much now. But if I go back and look at all the famous photographers that took pictures, they still hold up. You know, if I see a picture of Jimi Hendrix was taken by Linda Eastman, who was Linda McCartney later, who's since passed away, that picture you can put out there today and look at it from, you know, when I'll be 55 years ago, whatever, that's just as lively it is as it was when it taken. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's those intimate mar mar moments that it, it, it's kind of like years ago, I was working with a, a TV star. And when Twitter just came out, and, and he said, I said, do you use Twitter? And he goes, why would people care what I eat? <laughs> you know, and I said, no, it's mm -hmm. not that. It's the fact that you're letting them in on your private life to show that you're just like everybody else and showing mm -hmm. that, that kind of that vulnerable side of you, so to speak. For sure. And, and I think that's what you do because, and, and the, the other side of it from the business perspective, it's not like there's not any bands out there. I mean, it's, I mean, I would assume now that you've been doing it for a little while that you've got a reputation that people are calling you now. I, I, I'm i blessed calls to all say the time. that happens sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so do you, so do you, I know you do a little bit most, do you, is it mostly country artists? Are you, are doing, I assume you do a little bit of everybody now. I'm trying to do a little bit of everybody. Um, I love, you know, the country and the, that, that kind of side of everything, the slower pace, you know, but I also, I love rock. I love rock and roll. I do love that fast paced energy. Um, I feel like that's really fun, especially to photograph. I love blues, indie, um, any kind of folk, sea roots stuff, Appalachian music. Uh, yeah. I love just a little bit of everything. If it's got a good groove to it, if it's funky, I like it. If it sounds real gritty and real loud, I like it. So there's a good blend of everything in there. And do they, so when a band calls you or their PR people call you, uh, you have to be, I would assume, I'm guessing, you have to be there, but you can't be seen. You know, you're the photographer. Kind of. You know, yeah, and, kind of. And it's like, okay. And, and of course, then you get all the, if you're depending on your, inter, they're taking pictures of, you get all the plastic and to, to, all, all access because you're the one that's taking the pictures. And, right. So in your, as you build up your clientele, what's your, what's your main goal? I mean, do you have a big goal? Like I want to go take pictures of so-and-so or photos of so-and-so, or really like to go at this level, or I like staying here. Or what's, what do you kind of go through in your mind as you progress down the road with your business? I have smaller goal, not smaller goals, but I have, uh, I guess I should say, I have kind of up in the air goals. I don't really have any one set direction that I want to end up. I don't really have one set artist that I want to end up with. Of course, I've got my bucket list of people I'd love to shoot for and bands and such and places I'd like to go and see in venues and all that. But um, when it really comes down to it, I feel like I end up in every room and at every show that I'm supposed to end up at and supposed to capture. And um, I, I would love to tour uh, across the, you know, right everywhere i'd love to do major touring like that that would be a dream come true um and just documenting the history of music i would say uh the the elements of what i do that i love and cherish the most is when i get to document the history of music being made when i get to be in the studio with the bands when i get mm. to design their or shoot their cover art um for the singles for the albums for anything like that uh, when I get to shoot the visuals for a project like that, it means more than anything to me. Um, so really that part of it, I would say, is what I cherish the most and always look forward to the most goal wise. You know, like I said, you know, a goal or something I would just really like to do would be to tour majorly um, across the world. But uh, that's if, more right, so of let me it. ask you, if you had your if you could, who would you go out with? Who would you like to tour right. with? I mean, anybody, right now, I mean, currently yeah, or yeah. Anybody. Of anybody in the world? Well, no, I mean, oh, man. If, I mean, if right now, if you could go out and say, 
I, ha I can make a phone call for you. Who would you want me to make that phone call to, to go on to, or who would you like to go with? Right now, somebody that I would really, really love to document is Noah Kahn. Um, Noah Kahn is one of my favorite artists. And right now, the impact of his music and the widespread impact that I've seen from his music is just second to none. I love it. And his music means so much to me. I would be over the moon to get to work <laughs> with him. You're right there at the creative process, but you're kind of like a fly on the wall. You know, you're involved, 100%. but you're not really involved. So you go in and somebody goes, okay, we're going to go in, um, whatever, the gentleman you just mentioned. Okay, I'm doing a studio date. You want to come in and take some photos. You have, you can be there, but you can't really be there. You know, nope. you can't, it's, it's, you know, and that really kind of lends itself because when you then hear later that you see the whole creation process go which is kind of cool because usually the only people who get to do that are the songwriters, the singer, songwriter, and the producer that's with them. But you go, mm -hmm. actually, the good news is you get to go in and say, okay, here's the song they brought out. I heard them play the acoustic part of it. Now they started adding this and all that stuff. And then it became a big hit and you go, oh, well, I was there when they did that. Oh, here's pictures of me. Here's pictures of the band doing it. I never, I never really thought about that, but you know, it's unfortunate too, but a lot of people don't have that, don't have the ability that maybe they can't afford it. They don't think about it. That's really kind of the fun part of it. I mean, it's work, but you're also, that's the fun part of it is because when you go to a studio, nobody really thinks about taking pictures, you know, yeah. it's, and it's important because even if for the artist, uh, it's, it's one of those things you want to document. You go, I was there, but no, no, no. There's some things you don't see. And, and I saw it too, when we, when we connected on during our phone call, you have a great eye, you know, Thank somebody, you. well, that's really what it's all about for me that you know people don't understand what they mean by movement in the picture and all this stuff and getting a, a sense of if you go and look at the news and you see the pulitzer prize winning photos they just they send a message to you and when i look at your work and I've, i was looking at it again the other day on instagram and some of it, you have that ability to portray that to people and i'm sure that's what the bands like because you see also you see that camaraderie or that part what every band member wants to do when you walk on stage i tell people all the time people want to like you it's not like you walk on stage and people don't want to like you but then and you probably had this scene this too where crowds or audiences really get into it and other audiences are like eh. you, you you've mm -hmm. seen it both yeah but, but when it all comes together you get to see that moment and document it when it all works mm -hmm. you know and that that's got to be rewarding for you it is. It's the most rewarding thing in the world. Uh, I tell people all of the time that the vibration that I feel in my body while I'm in the pit sandwiched between the voices of the people and where the music is coming from out of the speakers, you know, and everything like that. I'm sandwiched in between these vibrations and I get to experience the shows in this really cool little nook and cranny that a lot of people don't ever find themselves in. And I get to hear it in just a specific little way that makes it magical for me no matter how big or small the show it is always very magical if i even just see one person out in the crowd singing along or maybe just mm. humming or maybe just swaying and looking somewhere in the direction of the stage uh that's enough for me that's enough to know that the music touched at least one person that night and that's all that counts as an artist myself that's exactly what you look you seek out is that one you hope it's more than one person obviously but if you get right. that one, if you get that one person that just kind of immersed in what you're doing you know that's that's the reward and, sure. and and that's when you i used to say all the time when i played a lot was we always wanted that moment when you got them i always called them that got them moment you know, mm -hmm. and you're playing because I've been in cover bands and did some originals. But when you do something like that and all of a sudden you could feel it and you just I used to turn to the band and go, got him. And mm -hmm. then and then you can feel it. It's like they they've just one giant group of people that were working together to do it. And that's really what the creative process for me. That's the reward. You know, and yeah. sure you 100%. get to see that as a different angle, which is kind of really kind of a cool thing to be able to to. to You've been it enough already to figure out that part. It is. It's 
it's I don't really know how to describe it to people. So I'm really glad I can show them. <laughs> well, and it's kind of like this and you know this, too. Um, there are nights people that are professional musicians can play all the time. Mm -hmm. But there are some nights that everybody's kind of together on the stage. And they kind of second guess what everybody's going to do. There's a moment everybody, if you've been fortunate enough to do that. And then if that kicks in and then the and then the crowd is with you, it's a whole different ball game. And it's crazy. It's crazy. And and I think that's the one thing I like about music because it's all the different genres. I I interview a lot of different genres. Um, I tend to go with I'm a blues guy with that. I do like some country people. Um, but they all do the same thing. They they have to do the same thing to tour and all that stuff. For but then sure. I was talking to one famous artist earlier this year, very famous blues artist, and I we we're explaining it to him. And he goes, yeah, I know what you mean. Even him that's been in business over 50 years, who travels all the time. He knew exactly what I meant, that moment. And if you have that opportunity to catch it, that's really cool. Because then it's, I don't know, it's just one of those moments that kind of supersedes everything that's going on. And so do you stay in mostly Texas now or do you travel outside of Texas? Uh, I've been in Texas a lot. Uh, I don't really go, to, I haven't gone too far out of Texas. I've gone through New Mexico and Oklahoma and Louisiana, um, but I haven't gotten to go too far out uh, just yet. But hopefully in the near future, you know, we can start venturing out some more. So tell me a little bit about the logistics. If I'm a band in Austin and I say, I want you to come take pictures and we talk about the photos, how we're going to do the package and all that stuff. Then you become, they tell you where they're going to go. I mean, if they want to go on tour, they're going to play. Obviously, if you're in Austin, you can do a lot of different things. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. You, you can do Bless a lot you. of different things. And if you're playing in Dallas, you can put up a lot of things. But you're actually, if, if they want to go and do multiple dates, then you kind of have to go along with the band, and figure out where they're going to be and all that stuff. Because you, you become part of the band. You're not really part of it, but, but you come part of the entourage, don't you? Yeah, for a short period. Yeah. Um, when we go on those runs, I do. One of the boys. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the times. Uh, like I said earlier, I mentioned her. Presley Hale uh, is my best friend and she is a phenomenal, phenomenal artist. Um, if you haven't already had the opportunity to listen to her a good bit, go do it. Um, but she is my girl, you know, so I started right. with her you know, having my girl with me all the time. And then uh, when I started getting work with bands and going on the road with bands, and then when I eventually started working for the Jacob Steli band a little bit more full time, um, I really realized what that was like to be one of the guys on the road, just being a, just doing it, doing the road thing, doing the van thing, you know, oh, yeah. van life and all that stuff. And, um, Luckily, I, I guess I do have a little bit of that hippie heart in me. So I feel like I got into the swing of things, not too, pretty gracefully, as graceful as I could, I guess. Um, but yeah, I just roll around with them. But you also have so much to do just in the bands that are in Texas. I mean, good Lord. I mean, come on. You could just, could, and you know, and then all the stuff that goes on and, and, uh, it just you could keep going it's actually in a kind of a, a recession proof inflation proof business to a certain degree because honestly you know, if you yeah if you get in there and you create the friendships and the business friendships and partnerships uh and you nurture those connections continuously that's what people want to do they want to hire people that they know they want to hire people they've worked with before trust and, and trust, trust is absolutely deal. Um, so I work really hard to make sure that I keep my reputation, you know, where it's at and take good care of it and everything like that. And, uh, I'm really grateful for the clients that continue to come back to me and give me their business. So I call you up and I'm a PR guy and I represent ABC. That's a top a lister. What do you tell them about your work? Why would I want I tell, to hire you? Um, I tell them that I'm a documentarian at heart, that I will be there in their moments and that I will observe them with as much open mind 
perception and creativity as I can and give them moments, frozen moments or videos, you know, documentation of whatever project they're hiring me for. And then I will do my best to make whoever's watching it or looking at those photos feel like they're also in the room with us during that. Well, and you've already, you've got a portfolio now. And, and, and the great thing about it is, um, no matter where you are, studio, stage, it's, as I said earlier, it's all the emotion that you emote when you look at these pictures. So if you're talking to Keith Richards <laughs> and you're showing the pictures, it doesn't matter whether it's that, that type of band, you could, they look at it and go, okay, I got it. They can, they can see it. And that's, that's what makes so great for you. You've already been doing it. Now, do you, and I know you said you still supplement your income with the wedding, but I assume that would, this is what you really want to do all the time if you could afford to do it. Yeah, this is pretty much what I do full time. Uh, I would say music is about 85 to 90% of my income. Uh, I still do grads, uh, so like senior photos seasonally. Yeah. Um, and I'm very grateful for my clientele in that area of people. They definitely help me out seasonally financially because those packages pay pretty decent. Um, I don't take on weddings anymore, uh, but I do second shoot still. So I will go with other photographers as their associate photographer. Okay. Um, I charge a day rate. I shoot the day of, they have the SD cards. They take them home and edit them. Um, so from a business perspective, it's honestly one of the smartest things I do business wise is second shooting, um, the day labor in conjunction to what I'm making is so much nicer looking on paper than, uh, if I was editing a wedding all by myself. Well, and you don't have to then. That's kind of a nice, exactly. you don't have to worry. No, about it. I love it. I, I would love to just continue to do this. Uh, like, like you said, music all the time. Uh, I still love doing creative portraits though. I hope that clients still come to me for creative portraits for the rest of my career, whether it be for cover art or for fashion or a brand, you know, I would love to work with different brands and help emulate their product or whatever their service they're trying to sell um, in a way that's true and genuine to them. Um, I love portraiture. I think it's amazing. And I want to continue to do that alongside music. I get to do that a lot in music, but I still like to do it with non-musicians as well. Well, there's probably not a lot of people, either male or female, that do what you do. I mean, I'm sure there are people out there doing it, but I'm sure there's not a lot of females doing what you do, you know, traveling with the band and all that stuff. I mean, it, to me. Yeah, it's definitely harder being a woman in this industry. I think the thing about what you do, too, is the fact that it's very unique. It's very niche. It's really a cool business. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> but I think the thing about it is people don't think about that. That's one of the reasons I want to talk to you about because people don't realize how important that part of the business is. And even though we're all consumers of music, it's still a business. And, and, you know, being able to convey what you take and put it out there for people to see is a big, huge part of it as far as I'm concerned. And I think you, I, I just think you're, uh, I think you're very good at what you do. I think you're going to continue to grow. You obviously have your head on straight. You know, I try. And, and and I think the other thing you would probably you have you have to do kind of like what I do. If I interview somebody famous, I can't be a fanboy. Exactly. You, know, you got to be just like everybody else. You can't go, oh my God, it's I've had to hold it in. I've had to <laughs> hold it in a few times. <laughs> I have. I truly have. I've gotten the opportunities to work for, you know, people that my parents listen to. Tell me, tell me and, who they are. Tell me who the, the big ones that you've had you've taken pictures of, photos. Um, well, we were talking about earlier how looking back at photos of artists after they have left us is, you know, something we get to cherish. And I was just recently looking back at some photos of Charlie Robinson. Um, and just so fun to look back on those and yeah. know that, you know, I got to be there and remembering 
uh, the, the voices, the choir of people singing that night. Um, here recently, I got to shoot for Band of Heathens, and they did a, a show with a couple of other people. They had Bruce Robeson, Charlie's younger brother, playing, so that mm-hmm. was really cool. Um, Hayes Carl, that was I was over the moon about Jamie Lynn Wilson, um, Allison. Uh, it was just a beautiful night of music and getting to, you know, be around these folks that my parents listen to. And, you know, now I'm getting to work for them is super full circle. Uh, Lost Lonely Boys hired me once to shoot a show for them in Fort Worth and getting to listen to them when aren't that's they, aren't what, they out of are they out of El Paso or something like that? I forgot where they I are. I believe so, yeah. 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 Um, getting a shoot for them and you know, listening to songs that I used to listen to as a child, you know, right in the back seat. It's just so crazy and so full circle for me, um, to get to to document those nights and work with those artists. Did you ever get the feeling that it was I go back to the gentleman that had played at a sold out Albert Hall in London years ago, back in 2009. And I asked him and he played with um, Joe Bonamassa, but he also played with um, another famous, um, I'll think of a minute. I said, when was the moment that you realized like, why am I here? This is a pinch me moment. He called it pinch me moment. Mm-hmm. And you, you have to overcome it. And, and you're in the same boat. So if you're talking to Lost Lonely Boys and they start playing Heaven, you go like, yep. I'm standing here playing. I'm taking pictures of these people. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> I actually cried in the pit during that show. When Heaven started, I like I knew, like, obviously, like, that's a huge song. Like, it's super big. And I've listened to it countless times throughout my life. And as soon as the first notes rang out, I just started crying down in the pit. I didn't care who saw me. I had to take in that moment with every bit of breath that I could manage because it was just like, while that moment to a lot of people, you know, you're like, why would you cry over something like that? And I was just like, for me in that moment, it was, it felt like confirmation that I was aligned with the, with the journey that is for me, you know? It you're just in the, felt you're in the right place. You're supposed to be there is what it is. You're yes. supposed to be there. I felt, I felt like I was supposed to be there. And it, those moments and those feelings in a world that I feel like tries to make us all feel like we just don't fit in at all is uh, gold. And I, I cherish that a lot. 